Because he wasn't even here. I don't know how to thank you, Taylor. This is the last piece of the puzzle. Now I can get back to my book. I have to call my publisher. <laughs> well, I'm happy to help Dr. Sadler. Digging up history, it's what I'd love to do. Uh, be sure to send me a copy when it gets finished. Excuse me. It's like you have a sixth sense. Well, there's still some stuff that you can't find on the internet. Do you have a second to talk? Did you get my message? Yeah, I can't believe it. Why would they cut our library's funding like that? The city depends on grants to help meet our budget. When those grants dry up, the city has no choice. And without that funding... You can't afford a research librarian on staff. I'm sorry, Taylor. I'm already looking for other funding. The second I can bring you back, I... We're gonna miss you so much. Not as much as I'm going to miss you, Linda. Linda promised to try and find funding. But that was my dream job, Craig. I know, and you were good at it too, okay? But trust me, Taylor, you'll find another job before you know it. What do I do in the meantime? Hey, you know what? I got a good idea. Why don't you come down here and visit? Christine and I have plenty of room. You've never seen Forest Ridge, and it'll be a really nice change from the big city. I mean, that does sound nice, but I have to find another job. Well, you can keep looking while you're down here. And Zoe will be over the moon to spend some time with her aunt. Oh, I do miss her. So? What's stopping you? <laughs> I'll think about it. Sorry I'm late. I got up early to help my dad. Man, I still can't believe you growing up on a ranch in Montana. Oh, come on, <laughs> man. My family in Forest Ridge go way back. My great-great-grandfather cleared the land for that yeah, ranch. Yeah, you told me. Him and Daniel Boone. Look, it's just so far away from you busting Sergeant running your own tech company in Silicon Valley. Oh, my phone. <laughs> yeah. well, come on, man. You gotta love this place, right? Every time I come here, it's like stepping back in time. Which is why it's costing so much money to bring it into the 21st century. Have you taken a good look at that electric panel? Yeah, did you talk to Lyle Linquist about doing the rewiring? Yeah, about that. Your buddy's been coming a bit too high. Okay, well, I'm not sure I'd call him my buddy, but... He said you two have known each other since grade school. Regardless, I hear he's a good... But it's my job to watch the bottom line. I know, Ray, it just makes a lot of sense to hire as many locals as possible, you know? Uh, none of it's going to put us over budget. Okay, all right, you're right. We'll get some more bids. Oh, one last thing before I leave. Apparently not everyone's too thrilled about turning the Grab Hotel into a luxury tourist attraction. Uh, I was worried about this. I mean, it could be good for the whole town. Why would anyone want to stop it? Well, you can find it when you ask him at the meeting. Wait, what? Hey, one of us needs to be there. And you're the local boy made good. <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? I'll call you. Hey, Dad. Hey there. I just gotta make some lunch. You wanna join me? Yeah, sure. Let me give you a hand with that. Dad. I'm heading into Helena for some meetings. We'll be back tomorrow. Supposed to be a storm front moving in. A couple inches of snow. <laughs> Dad, it's October. The leaves just started changing. It's not gonna snow. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time we were in for a surprise. There's a frost warning. You better watch the roads. Could get icy out there. I'll be fine. Eh, all that time living in California. You could be out of practice driving in it. I'll be okay. All right, I promise. Hey, let me ask you something. Do you know anything about this town meeting tomorrow night? Yeah, what about the hotel? I mean, you grew up here, Joel. You know, when people got something on their mind, they're not shy about speaking up. Yeah, that I do. So, what is it exactly on their mind? They barely see you around here anymore. And then one day you show up, say you're gonna 
turn one of the oldest establishments in town into some sort of fancy resort. And it's not a resort. It's a... It's a destination. See? Right there. Destination. <laughs> what does that even mean? Well, so what are you saying? I got a bit of a PR problem. I'm saying you got to talk straight to people if you want to get them on board. Look, why don't you take my truck? That little go-kart of yours isn't going to be much good if the weather turns. <laughs> OK, Dad. You know what? I'll tell you what. I'll leave you the keys. You can take that little golden ride for a spin. <laughs> already. Goodness. You all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I, I think I must have hit a patch of black ice and I thought I was gonna freeze out here. Yeah. Thank you for stopping. You lose something? Oh, there it is. Yes. I don't suppose you have any reception out here? Uh, yeah, not out here. <sighs> what I can do is I can offer you a ride if you'd like. I... But you don't know me. So here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna write my license plate down. You can take this, put it on your dash, and, you know, if anyone comes looking for you, they'll know where to find you. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. Thank you. Easy. <gasps> so, uh, you know, before I do commit to this, which way are you headed? <laughs> uh, I'm actually heading to a small town called Forest Ridge. I know it well. Come on, I'll get you out of the cool way. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite the day. I see that. Come on. <laughs> I'm Taylor, by the way. Introductions. <laughs> Forgot about that part. Uh, Joel. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. So, uh, well, what brings you to Forest Ridge? Uh, my big brother lives here with his family. I've actually never been here before. Well, I might be slightly biased, being that I'm from here, but <laughs> <laughs> there's no place quite like it. And I know I've been around a lot, so I think you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, I hope so. Pleasure meeting you, Taylor. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you too. Thank you for, you know, rescuing me. Uh, yeah, no, it's fun. It's fun. You should do it again. <laughs> 
Hope to see you around. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. So good to see you, too. We were a little worried about the weather. You're glad you made it. Oh, yeah, more or less. And Taylor! Oh, my gosh, Zoe! You've gotten so big. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Thank you so much for letting of me course. stay. Of course. Your house is so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad we could get you to Forest Ridge. Yeah, it's such a nice change of pace from going to Seattle all the time, right? Yep, I made it. Four years later, here I am. Let me take your jacket. <laughs> we're just happy that you're here now. I made you a drawing. You did? Why don't you go get it, sweetie? She's been working on it all morning. She's so excited to show you. <laughs> How was the drive? Uh, it was very exhilarating. My car is actually in a ditch right now, but a kind stranger gave me a lift and dropped me off. Why didn't you give me a call? I had no signal. Oh, Were you scared? <laughs> I was cold, but I'm here now and I couldn't be happier. Here you go. This is for me? Yeah. Wait, is this me? <laughs> That's very impressive. She's so talented. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm going to need you to call a tow truck in the morning. Absolutely. OK. Yeah, no problem. Well, dinner's almost ready. Why don't you get settled in? OK. I'll show you your room. <gasps> yes, please. Yay. <laughs> Guess what? What? I have a surprise for you. Really? Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Wait, where, where did I put it? Put what? Uh, my phone. I must have left it in the car. <sighs> Which I will get tomorrow. Because right now, we have some reading to do. I like this one. <laughs> That's a really good choice. All right. I thought you and Danny hit it off. We did. He's great. Except, except, uh, I don't know, living in Seattle, I just keep meeting these tech bros. They're all the same. They have their own startup, brilliant minds, awkwardly cute. They plan to take over the world and become millionaires by the time they're 30. That doesn't sound so bad. Yeah, except for the fact that the only books they read are on tiny little screens. But maybe they're right. Right about what? That as much as I love what I do, libraries are obsolete. Not as long as you have anything to say about it, right? <laughs> hey, did I ever tell you that my little sis sisters? No, that's not true. No. <laughs> Two out of three was OK. That's oh, better. Yeah, that's a lot better. Got to run? Give me a kiss? I'll call the tow truck when I get to work, OK? OK, thank you. And listen, why don't you come by the uh, graph later? Yeah, for sure. All right? OK. I love you. Love you, too. Have a good day. Hey, somewhere out there, there's a guy who's going to appreciate your love of books. <laughs> Zoe, come on. Got to scoot. How are we doing? Pretty good. Stuff. Um, the folks in 401 called down. They got a leaky faucet. Oh, okay. I'll go check it out. Yeah. And Joel Sheenan and that other fellow are in the office. Sounds like they're going over some more bids. Perfect. Just in time to turn the graph into Montana's newest all-inclusive entertainment experience. Yeah, I guess so. Um, so you're coming to the meeting tonight, right? Yes, of course. Absolutely. Okay. But if these guys get their hands on those permits, we don't recognize this place. What room is that? Um, 401. 401. Thank you. Okay. Oh, man, am I glad to see you. You must be Taylor. Hi. 
Everything checks out. You might want to start it up, let her warm up a bit. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. How much do I owe you? All taken care of. Wait, really? <sighs> Craig did not have to do that. Actually, it was a fellow by the name of Joel Sheen and settled the bill. Yeah, you too. Looking for something? Oh. Right. It was in your car. You know, I think there's an outside chance you might have dropped this in the truck. I mean, losing my phone twice in one day, that's not a good thing. Oof. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I once misplaced a really, really big cow. It was a little awkward. But I did find her, though. I mean, eventually. So. I mean, hey, these things happen. That's good to know. Hmm. What happened to your truck? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I tend to switch things up from time to time. And uh, what do you think? I don't know. You seem like more of a truck guy to me. Do I? <laughs> hmm. I mean, you did just tell me a story about a cow. It's a true story. I just don't know if it'll fit in the back of your auto. Oh, it's roomier than it looks. <laughs> um, listen, I really appreciate you calling me a tow truck, but I cannot let you pay for it. No, of course not. Absolutely not. I wouldn't dream of it. I mean, come on, we just met. It's a little forward, right? Huh? But what I will do is I'm going to write my number down right here. I'm going to give it to you. You'll call me, and maybe we go grab coffee, and then you can pay me back. What do you say? Deal. All right, then. <laughs> All right. Until then. Until then. file, then that'd be great. Absolutely, we can do that. Hey, look who made it. Taylor, I want you to meet Samantha Wilde. Hi. my sister, Taylor. So nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> you too. Sam runs the front desk and makes sure that everybody stays nice and happy around here. <laughs> How do you like your little town so far? Oh my gosh, it is so beautiful. Yeah. And I hear that you guys have something big coming up. Yes, the Autumn Harvest Ball next week. That's when we really shine. <laughs> A ball that, that sounds fancy. <laughs> it used to be. It's way more casual now. It's a lot of fun for the whole town. <laughs> Oh, excuse me. Hey, so I called about your car this morning, and they said it was already taken care of? Uh, yeah. Looks like my kind stranger came through again. Does a kind stranger have a name? <laughs> I know that look. No, you are not setting me up. I don't think so. All right. Have it your way. So, what do you think of the place? It really is so lovely. It's like stepping back in time. Yeah. It's over 100 years old, and all things considered, it should go for another 100. Assuming we can stop it from getting completely gutted. What do you mean? There's some developers, and they say they can just do a fancy new resort. I mean, I like it the way it is. <laughs> Which is exactly what I plan on telling the town council tonight at the meeting. Oh, yeah, I saw the flyer at your house. Yeah. Hey, you should come along. <laughs> I mean, I can use all the help I can get. OK, yeah, sure. Great. Let me show you around. Awesome. Brought an extra sandwich if you want. librarian here. Oh, Taylor Harris. So nice to meet you. Harris. Ah, you must be Zoe's aunt. How did you know? Zoe always talks about her aunt Taylor being a librarian, too. <laughs> She's been very excited about your visit. Oh, well, not as excited as I was to see her. Why don't I open up a card for you so you can check that out? 
Oh, I mean, that's so nice, but I've read this probably a dozen times, <laughs> and I don't know how long I'm going to be here, so. Well, you are here. Think of it like visiting an old friend. I love that. Okay. Thanks. The point is, why say anything at all? Look, just go to the meeting, smile nice, and let them get out their system. Thank you. Huh? Hey. It's more Listen, when those tourist dollars start rolling in, everyone's going to be your best friend. Thank you. That's not going to be for two months. In fact, in the meantime, I'd like the whole town to be on board. Ugh. All right. You want to make a speech, right? Let everyone know how much you're looking forward to going to this harvest ball thing. I mean, that's all they want to talk about anyway. Thank you. Uh, but it happens to be a pretty big deal around here. OK. Better idea. You find a date, and you go to the ball. I mean, who's going to stay mad at you when you're tripping the light? Fantastic. Right, right. Right? I ain't tripping any light. Fantastic at the ball. Or otherwise. <laughs> Anyways, I got some stuff here. You got to... Uh, where are you going? Uh, I will see you back at the hotel. I, I got something. So... Taylor. Hey. Hi. What are you doing here? Uh, I had this, uh, business thing. It's... So, I. Uh, How's the town treating you? Find your way around? I am, actually. I just stopped by the library and got myself a card. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good choice. Although, you know, I've always been more of a Charlotte fan. Charlotte? Charlotte Bronze. Who's that, Emily? You know Jane Eyre? <laughs> well, we cannot forget their favorite sister. And how can we ever forget Anne? Oh, I love Anne. You're full of a lot of surprises, aren't you? Joe. Uh, Is that your business thing? Yeah, oh, yeah. I gotta go. Sorry. Uh, I'll call you about that coffee. I'm looking forward to it. Bye. All right, everyone, settle down. As you all know, we are here to take public comment on the permit phase of the proposed renovations of the Graff Hotel. Craig Harris has asked to get the ball rolling. Yeah. Thanks, Phyllis. Um, I just want to say that, well, I've been working at the Graff for four years now. I suppose that means I know it as well as anybody. <laughs> I didn't grow up here like a lot of you did. When my wife, Christine, introduced me to her hometown, it's safe to say that I was smitten with my wife, too. <laughs> Since then, I've fallen in love with Forest Ridge and everything about it, especially the graph. It's part of our history in this town. And I think that that's something that should be preserved and cherished. And I don't think it should be sacrificed for a quick profit. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. I'm going to open the floor now. Who's next? Uh, excuse me, I'd like to say something. gentlemen. My name is Joel Sheenan. We bought the Graff Hotel. And with these permits, we intend to make some pretty big changes. My family has a deep, deep roots here in Forest Ridge. So I'm doing this because I love this town. I've seen towns like ours grow and prosper by attracting visitors every year. That's the goal. You see, but what they realized was that as important as their history is, they can't let it hold them back. They need to move into the 21st century. They need to plan ahead for the future. And so do we. The plans that we have for the Graff Hotel, they're going to be good for this town. That's why we need this council to endorse these permits. It's for us. So we can take that next step forward and prepare for the future because we don't want our history to hold us back 
Again, my name is Joel Sheenan, and I thank you for your time. I actually have a question. Sure. Isn't the Graff Hotel 100 years old? Mm -hmm. So that means it's eligible for a landmark status. For landmark status, the state of Montana says we have to prove that a significant historical event took place involving the building. That's exactly right. Thank you, Phyllis. And uh, according to our research, there's no evidence of that with the Graff Hotel. Well, who did this research? Well, I hired some extremely reputable experts to look into it. You mean your company hired people to look up the landmark status for a building that you want to develop? A kind of significant event happened at the Graff, and then the hotel would be preserved? According to the state of Montana, yes. Well, I don't know. Maybe Mr. Sheenan's idea of significant is really just in his own best interest. Oh, OK, OK, OK. <laughs> Look, that's a little uh, far. Phyllis, I... maybe we could take some time to explore this and before the council makes their final decision. All right, this is what we'll do. We'll take a week to look this over, then we'll reconvene and hear what everyone has to say. Any objections? Good. Meeting adjourned. Disaster. You did it. Just got the ball started. Still gotta find some proof. Yeah, but it looks like this is really in your wheelhouse. What do you say? You wanna give us a hand with this? Sure. You made quite the impression last night. Everybody's talking about it. I gotta admit, I was a little surprised the way you called out Joel Sheenan like that. Yeah, well, he threw me a curveball too. Do you remember that kind stranger I told you about? Wait, that was Joel? Yes. And I can't tell Craig, obviously, because he's not exactly his favorite person right now. This is true. He seems so nice, too, and so down to earth. I, I can't believe I fell for that story that he grew up in Forest Ridge. That wasn't a story. Joel and I went to school together. But you did? Yeah, they did really well, too. Honor roll, valedictorian. He never really made a big deal out of it, though, so none of us really knew how he'd get the money to buy the hotel. After graduation, we all thought he'd move back to the ranch, work with his dad. But he ended up getting recruited by some tech company in California. <sighs> Another tech guy. But yeah, so he stayed there until his stock was vested, and that's how he got his startup off the ground. He has his own company? Yeah. Helped develop a couple apps that got a lot of attention. So he seems to be doing quite all right for himself. OK, so this is what I don't understand. If he doesn't live here, why even buy the hotel? I've been wondering that myself. But I will say, I'm not surprised he stopped to help you the other day. What do you mean? Growing up, Joel was always the first person to lend a helping hand to anybody who needed it. So maybe the hotel is his way of giving back to the town. No, because why make all these changes that nobody wants? Maybe you should ask him the next time you see him. I can't. I promised Craig I would help him. and. I can't do that and hang out with Joel at the same time. Besides, I need to focus. I have to, I have to find a job. Yeah, no. We don't want anything to distract you. Oh. Heard the meeting last night got mighty interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. These travels fast in Forest Ridge. <laughs> Social media got nothing on us. Hmm. What are you going to do? Not that much I can do until we get those permits. I'm not talking about permits, son. I'm talking about all those people that need to know you're acting in good faith. I told him, Dad. I did what I could. I'm here to help. <sighs> the way they see it, part of their town, part of their history, it's changing forever. There's no record of anything historically significant happening at the Graff Hotel. Even besides me falling in love with your mother at our first harvest ball, Besides that, of course. See, that's what it's all about, Joel. Things people remember. What they wore, the song they danced to first, the uh, way the lights shine a certain way. Me? I always remember the wallpaper. Wallpaper? Yeah. In the hallway, on the way to the ballroom. I remember Addie and I were on our way in. We were... <laughs> we were just a couple of kids. 
all dressed up for a grown-up fancy ball. I noticed the blue in the wallpaper matched the color of her eyes. I knew right then and there, we were going to be dancing at that ball for the rest of our lives. You never told me this story. I guess it's been on my mind lately. But with the ball coming up and how your mother and I never miss one, Till now, you want to talk about historical significance? You take a look at that wallpaper. Quick question Did I come on too strongly about my preference for Charlotte instead of Emily? I. What? No, 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 I mean, I get it, I get it. I can really dig my heels in when it comes to the Bronte sisters. I... You were very diplomatic. Okay, then I'm stumped. Uh, I am, because up until that point, I didn't think we disagreed about well, anything. Of course, up until the meeting, that is. So, look, when you stopped to help me, I thought you were just this nice, small-town guy who Probably looks really cool riding a horse. Well, be fair, be fair. You find the right horse. It's hard to look bad. What I didn't know is that you own your own tech company and you drive a flashy car and you can afford to buy and refurbish old hotels. Okay, technically it's one hotel. That's probably not the no, point. No, no. The point is, is you weren't what you said you were. And you left out some pretty important details. It's just, the thing is, it's like any time I tell people what I do or about my foundation or or I talk about my collection of, of, of first editions or art or anything. Wait, you collect books? See? Right there. That's what I'm talking about. You see? People see me in a completely different light and then it's like there's this... Stop. There's something I haven't told you yet. There are a lot of people in this town who love that old hotel. You noticed? One of those people happens to be my brother. Craig Harris. Your brother's Craig. Oh. The one I'm visiting. That's why he came to town. Okay. So now that I know who you are, and you know who I am, I think, I think it's probably best if you just send me the tow truck bill. I'm guessing you want to pass on a cup of coffee. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. Bye. Bye. And we we'll redesigned the main floor to accommodate new shops and a restaurant. You can look at the floor plans to see which spaces you prefer. And, uh, oh, I'll let Joel tell you about this part. Joel? Hmm? Ah, uh, this way. My favorite part is what they call the Grand Ballroom. Oh, uh, it's the decorating committee for the ball. I told him it's okay to get started, but if you need the room... No, please, you, um, just go ahead. All right, I'll tell you what. Um, in the meantime, the plans. Uh, how's that sound? Uh, would you mind escorting them, Ray? Oh, yeah, sure. Right this way. It's gonna look great, Craig. Colors. Mm. Lights. Corn, man. It's just, it's corn. I'm gonna go okay. to my meeting. I have work to do, but I needed to tell you, good job. Thank you. I want you to forget it. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> wow. Right. So I'm sure you both agree that this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Again, thanks for coming. I'll call you guys next week. You okay? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. What's with the sudden fascination with wallpaper? <laughs> you 
happy. I wasn't fascinated. <sighs> Listen, buddy, you got to keep your head in the game. Word's getting around. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the fact that the locals aren't crazy about this project. I'm getting a few calls from our potential store tenants. They want to know if we're still moving forward. Of course we are. Then we better make sure that this doesn't steamroll on us. Maybe, you know, maybe that's not a bad idea about you finding a date with Ray. us, Cindy. Hey, lay on the charm. Do a little smoothing. Ray, I am not taking a date to the ball to make people like me. All I'm saying is we got to do something. Hang on. Think about it. Got a lot riding on this. Hey. Are you enjoying your visit with Catherine and Heathcliff? Very much. <laughs> I was thinking, my part-time librarian recently moved to Denver, and I've been looking for someone to help out around here, if you're interested. Oh, yeah. I mean, that would be amazing. I just, uh, I don't know how long I'm here for. Well, while you are here, I could sure use your help. That's, yeah, I, I yes, <laughs> I would love to. Wonderful. Come by tomorrow, and we'll get you started. All right, okay. Thanks. I was wondering if you could help me find a book. Well, you see, I finished this one again. Jane Eyre, it's impressive. And I'm looking for something a little different. And I figured who better to ask than a librarian? Well, I don't officially work here yet. Well, then we'll make it unofficial. I'm looking for something a little bit less romantic and more down to earth with people who don't necessarily belong together, but they are willing to take a chance even if the odds are stacked against them. Well, it might not be a happy ending. There's only one way to find out. Let me give you a tour of the hotel tonight. Why would you want to do that? Because, Taylor, I respect the fact that you're standing by your brother. I do. But I also think that if you get to know me better, that you can decide for yourself the person that I really am. So, a tour. Just a tour, not a date. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll see you at seven. Tonight. Tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. So the idea is to remodel and refurbish the place, but still keep the feel of the old hotel. If you want it to feel old, why don't you just keep it the way it is? Nah, people still want the amenities. They just want them wrapped in a more nostalgic package, right? <laughs> I hear you on the nostalgia. Wow, this looks like it's been here a long time. My dad still remembers it from the first time he brought my mom to the ball. They used to go? They did. Every year. She passed away last year. I'm sorry. Thank you. First time he came here, he saw that wallpaper. The way the color matched my mom's eyes. He knew he'd spend the rest of his life with her. It sounds so simple. <laughs> now when two people just know. I think it is. What if it's the right two people? you might get hungry. Is this part of your tour? Well, I can always have him take it back. <laughs> it's fine. Didn't say it was. <laughs> hey, new jacket, new lady. Until you met me. <laughs> Craig and I grew up in Seattle. He's actually the reason I got my first librarian job. Really? Mm-hmm. We were in high school, and this one summer, our local library was looking for a volunteer. And I wanted the job more than anything. So <laughs> Craig
Greg took the bus all the way downtown so that he could go talk to the head librarian. And he told them that no one loves books as much as I do. And that he would never have even opened a book if it weren't for me. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been really convincing because I got the job. And he's been there for me ever since. He sounds like a great brother. Yes. And very determined once he makes his mind up about something. This much I know. <laughs> Craig thinks you're doing this whole thing for the town as a business deal. And what do you think? I believe you want to help the town and that your intentions are good, but... But? Why the graph? Why all the extra time and money? Growing up, my dad and I, we used to work the ranch all the time. You know, sometimes we would camp out overnight, just the two of us, you know, under the stars. And we'd talk all night. It was so special. I used to wish I had a magic wand <laughs> and that I could wave it and just make those moments last a little bit longer, you know? It's, it's wonderful. That's how I feel about this town and all the people. That if I could just wave a magic wand and make Forest Ridge the way it was when I was growing up, I... <laughs> Turns out I'm not a wizard. <laughs> I have a wand. <laughs> Things are always changing, Joel. You're right. And all we can do is make sure and try to change them for the better. That's all I want to do. I want to help my hometown grow and keep all the things that make it so special. Like Harvest Paul? <laughs> what are you doing? May I? Oh. <laughs> No, no, I'm not, I'm not much of a dancer. <laughs> Follow my lead. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> it's all in the hips, baby. What are you talking about? It's you. I'm a great dancer. <laughs> You're a great partner. I'm not gonna argue with that. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Taylor, I was wondering, um, you, um, and me, oh my gosh, I, <laughs> why do I suddenly feel like I'm back in high school? Uh, <laughs> well, from what I hear, you were actually really cool in high school. Yeah, that's debatable. I don't know. Okay. Would you like to go to the ball with me? Wait, seriously? Seriously. Whoa, um... Uh, wait, Craig. No, I just, I, um, I saw the light. I thought somebody forgot to Craig. Show. Sorry. Sorry. about tonight. When my car broke down in the ditch, Joel was the guy that ended up stopping and helping me. Yeah, I kind of put that together. And he was so nice, and we hit it off, but I had no idea how you really felt about him until the meeting. I know I probably should have told you about tonight, but I thought maybe if I went and talked to him, I could change his mind. Taylor, I'm not upset that you dance with Joel. But the way you left... I can take that place apart and put it back together again. 
If Joel runs through this place with his plans, they won't need me anymore. You mean you won't have a job? I didn't say it, but it just makes sense. Once that hotel's all new and shiny, why keep me around? Craig, I really don't think he's like that. He's a businessman. Sooner or later, they all do the math. Well, you heard the council. All we have to do is find a historically significant thing. You really think that's possible? It's what I do. Besides, I know how much it means to you, and I, I promise you I will not stop until I find something. Did he ask you the ball? I haven't given him my answer yet. You should go. It's a lot of fun. You never know. This might be the last. You know, I know why you're here, and I completely understand. But Craig is your brother. You want to help him. <laughs> you're right. I do want to help him. But I also want to go to the Harvest Ball with you. Oh, okay, well, wait. Wait, uh, you do? I do, as long as you're OK with me doing it. I have to admit, this is without a doubt the most unusual offer I've ever had. So what do you say? Is it a date? Oh, what do I say? Ah. Uh, as long as you understand, I'm not going to go easy just because it's you. I would expect no less. Well, then, it's a date. <laughs> a darn good one. I look very much forward to it. <laughs> the best way of digging up the hotel's history was from some local sources. Perhaps a first person's account? Much better than searching the internet, yes. <laughs> and considering you know the area so well, I was hoping you could point me in the right direction. Ah, I may have one idea. Great. Over the years, the library's collected a kind of archive of the town's history. Newspapers, photographs, uh, letters and diaries. What are you doing with all of these? Well, the plan was to have it digitized and online, but as you can see, we haven't made much progress. <laughs> if you think it can help. It looks like a great place to start. Oh, wonderful. OK. All right. See, I thought I was the only one who came in early. Yeah, well, I had some time before the library opened. Do you want help? Oh, no, 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 no. That is uh, way beyond my skill set. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Come on. It's easy. I'll try. Right. Sit. OK. <sighs> OK. You're going to take one of these, and you are going to bend the floral wire into a J, and then you're going to place it right beneath there. Uh, the letter J? Yeah, <laughs> or like a little loop. <laughs> yeah, I think that might have single-handedly ruined the entire ball. <laughs> okay, no, let's um. With glue. Let's try this one. Okay, let me do this together. Uh. So we're gonna take the wire, we're gonna bend it like this, and then we're going to weave it through. <laughs> hey, pay attention. Would you like to come to the ranch tonight and have dinner with my dad and me? Dinner? Yeah. Come on, he's a good cook. I'd love to show you around the ranch. You're not too busy. Uh, yeah. I'd love that. Hey! Oh, burn. That wind really cuts through you, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, that's nothing. Around here, it's not really cold until your eyelashes freeze over. Oh, <laughs> don't even joke. <laughs> yeah, come on. Let me take your jacket. Oh, thank you. Of course. <sighs> Taylor, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for inviting me. My pleasure. Um, sorry to say I'm going to have to skip dinner, though. One of the calves stopped taking the bottle. Let me, let me go. Let me take a shot at it. You have a guest. No, I mean, this is important. Look, I'm sorry, Taylor. I think we're gonna have to reschedule. I mean, this could take a while. Well, I'd love to help if I could. 
Are you sure? You know it's gonna get a lot colder <laughs> out there, right? You know, I think my eyelashes can take it. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go. So does this happen a lot? Oh, yeah, you know, it's, it's always something. It's either too hot, it's too cold, the river's flooding, the river's dried up. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, it's barrel monkeys. So is that why you left? To get away from... I'm sorry, it's probably none of my business. No, uh... It's a fair question. I love this place so much, why leave it? You know, no matter how much I love Forest Ridge, I just had this feeling the things I wanted in life, they weren't here. Does it make sense? I didn't even know what that was, but I knew that it was out there somewhere. And if I wanted to find it, then I had to leave the place I love. So, have you found it? What you're looking for? Not yet. Feels like I'm getting closer all the time. Come on. There we go. Oh, there we go. Is she gonna be okay? Yeah, she's gonna be just fine. All right? Yeah. Hey, Paul Bunyan. <laughs> I thought you were coming into town. Yeah. Dad's got about 100 things to do around here. Figured I'd give him a hand, you know? Uh-huh. Well, have you been checking your messages recently? Oh, my phone's in the house. Why? What's going on? Alan's trying to reach you. The whole system crashed this morning. What? Yep. Do they need me to head back, or? No, nah, don't know yet. Let's see what Alan says when he gets us back online. But besides, you need to be here for that meeting with the town council. Yeah. And the ball. Since when was that on your calendar? Oh, yeah. I decided I'm going to go. <laughs> Wait, with an actual date? As a matter of fact, uh... Ray, yes, with an actual date. <laughs> you sly dog. You see, now, this is what I'm talking about, right? Chopping wood, going to the ball. This is how we're going to win the hearts and minds around here. Oh, wait a minute. No. No, wait, 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 wait. Don't move. Don't move. I should take a picture, you know? You and the axe for the website? No. Yeah, no, why? No, look, what? I'm going to go call Alan, make sure everything's all right. Oh, hey. I believe Lincoln was president. <laughs> and somehow you still keep it up and running. Yeah. Against all odds. What brings you down here? Uh, Sam said you were down here. I walked Zoe over from the library. She's upstairs helping with the decorating. Yeah, I'm almost done here. It's just hitting that, and we're good. Good. All right. How goes the search? Uh, good. I mean, it's going. There's still a couple days until the meeting, and I'm hoping something turns up. Hey, uh, sorry for getting you involved in all this. What do you mean? Ah, it's just, I mean, what are we hanging on to, you know? A bunch of old stories and a few fond memories. It's, it's all right. OK, those are important things, too. Oh, I know they are. It's just. You heard what Joel said. Man, that guy can be convincing when he really wants something. Yeah, well, so can I. Yeah, you're telling me. Uh, hey, what's in here? Oh, uh, this is the old maid's quarters. Wait, they lived at the hotel? Oh, yeah. Back in the day, they were on call 24-7. <sighs> Management wanted them close, so they put them up in here. Do you mind if I Yeah, go ahead. Out? All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-huh. Don't get in any trouble.
The letters are addressed to Catherine Donnelly, care of the hotel. This must be her. She immigrated from Dublin and made her way cross country to Montana. She worked at the Graph? Sounds like she was a maid soon after it opened. What happened to her? I don't know, she must have moved on, but she left these behind. Maybe we can... Actually, Joyce, do you have a magnifying glass? Um, yeah, sure. Great. Here you go. Okay, so you see that woman on the right? I think that's Mary Catherine, but check this out. The guy in the middle, right in front, who does that look like? <laughs> Whoa. Right? Is that? It sure looks like him. Oh my gosh. Not real. Theodore Roosevelt was president from 1901 to 1909. During that time, he traveled all across the country while he was in office. I just can't find anything that says he's been in Forest Ridge. Well, maybe he was just passing through. But suppose he was here on official business? I think that would be a piece of history worth saving. Along with the hotel where it happened. <laughs> How do we find out? Well, now that we know the time frame, we can just narrow down the dates. Okay. Back to square one, then. I think it's our best shot. Well, let's get started. <laughs> hey, Alan. Yeah, what's going on? All right. Yeah, no, keep me posted. Okay, all right, thanks. Uh, so? We caught it in time, but we were definitely hacked. Uh, let me call him. I'll get on top of it. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. All right, I'll catch you inside. All right, cool. Sorry I didn't call earlier. I just, well, I've been putting out fires everywhere today. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Things are hopping over here, too. How's our hungry calf doing? Much better. Thank you for asking. You know, in fact, she wanted me to well, invite you over so she could personally thank you for your help. <laughs> she did, did she? Listen, listen, I know that this is, well, incredibly last second notice, but, um, what do you think if we reschedule the dinner for tonight? I promise you, no cattle wrangling this time. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll see you tonight. I'll see you tonight. Thank you. That was so amazing. Learn to cook on a campfire. It's an old Sheen and family tradition. <laughs> a tradition that's been passed down to the next generation? Oh, it's hard to tell. It's not much on the great outdoors these days. Yeah, that ought to tell you something. So, Joel tells me that you're going to the Harvest Ball together. I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know if he told you, but that ball is another sheet in family tradition. Never missed a one. Joel, too, when he was growing up. Should have seen a little tight in a suit and tie. Man, I think I got pictures around here somewhere. No. Oh, you know, she doesn't want to see any photos. No, I sure do. <laughs> uh, maybe later. <laughs> Little fella was so shy, he couldn't get up the courage to ask a girl to dance, so he would ask his mom. Oh, God. Which is how since, uh, when? Since he went off to college? Uh, yeah. Guess he just hasn't met anybody he wanted to take. Till now. It's very subtle. Yeah. It's very subtle. <laughs> Which one's your mom? Uh, right there in the middle. She's beautiful. Never more beautiful than at the Harvest Ball. And that hardworking young fella is Timothy Patrick Sheenan, my great grandfather. That's the only photo we even have of him. Yeah. Where was that taken? Right here. You know, you built that cabin back before Montana was even a state. You cleared the land for the ranch. Got married, had a family. Mm. And the Sheenan family has been here ever since. There's something about this photo. 
What do you mean? I don't know, but I can't put my finger on it. I don't understand why there's nothing online about him traveling to Forest Ridge. I mean, he was the president. Shouldn't there be some sort of record? Maybe they didn't know he was here. Right, Teddy Roosevelt just happened to slip under the radar and come to Forest Ridge, Montana. Well, if anybody can get to the bottom of this, you can. <sighs> I knew there was something about this photo. What? There's two feet of snow on the ground. It must have been freezing. Yeah, you're right. When I saw the snow, I assumed it was winter. But look at the trees. You're covered with leaves. Exactly. So it must have been taken in spring. That happens sometimes. We get a freak snowstorm that time of year. So maybe Roosevelt didn't know that and he wasn't expecting snow. But still, there must have been a reason he was in Montana at that time. So how do we find that out? So my girlfriend, Caitlin, she works at the National Archives in DC. So I emailed her the photo and she said she was going to search the records to see all the traveling that the president did during that time. Can she find out before the town council meets? Fingers crossed. She said she would get back to me as soon as possible, but I think it's looking good. In the meantime, instead of just sitting around and waiting, I figured I would come help decorate. What can I do? Yeah, well, uh, can you help bring in the rest of the centerpieces from the lobby? Of course. So every year, the locals have this big harvest dance thing here at the hotel. It's actually a lot of fun. You want to talk about dedication. Joel here is so determined to win over his old hometown to make sure those permits get approved. He actually went out and found himself a date for the dance. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, don't get me wrong. She seems very nice. But this might be just any old date on his arm. Her brother just so happens to be the leading opposition. <laughs> <laughs> so if I know my buddy Joel at all, those permits are in the bag. I decided to drive all the way out here to tell you in person that I'm not going to the ball with you. You can find someone else to win over your hometown. What are you talking about? I was there. I heard everything. You know, all the things Ray said to the guys about your real reason for asking me? No, no, no. Taylor, you don't understand. You're that right. was. I don't understand. I don't understand how the guy that I'm starting to care about isn't real. You're not who I thought you were. You said you weren't sure that you'd ever find what you were looking for. <sighs> Looks like you just found it. Taylor! Ray said those things? You didn't speak up? No, Dad, I didn't. I didn't say anything. I was in a business meeting. There's a time and a place, and that wasn't it. Some things mean more than money. Thought you knew that, son. Christine told me what happened with Joel today. I'm sorry. Yeah, you were right. What? When Joel drove you into town, I knew how you felt about him. And there's a part of me that hoped that whatever it is that you saw in him would be who he was. Yeah, me too. But look, the council meeting's tonight, and one way or another, this is all gonna get settled. And when it does, I want you to promise me something. <laughs> well, that depends what the promise is. Okay. I want you to promise me that you are going to come to the ball with Christine and I. Craig. Just come see what the fuss is about. Come to the ball and see how much this town means to all of us. <sighs> okay. 
Okay, fine. I'll go. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll have you. <laughs> See you in a bit. See you in a bit. Joel, you got this. Just give them that sunny smile and remind them how great this is going to be. All right? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's my friend Caitlin at the archives. I have to get to the library. The meeting's about to start. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, don't worry. I'll be right back. What do you mean? Ta I'll be Taylor. right back. Don't worry. Started. As you all know, we're here to take public comment on whether the Graff Hotel should be, or even can be, designated an historic landmark. Craig? Craig, are you ready? Craig? Hi. Yes. Yeah, I'm ready. Please, yes. So. Is everything all right there? Yeah, I just, just have to, it's a little, I got it, I got it. Come on, come on. In addition to all of the social events that we, uh, that we hold at the, the, the graph, like um, the Harvest Ball. Harvest Ball. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, absolutely. as I'm sure you are. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> so I think it's also uh, relevant and uh, very important to pay close attention to the um, civic benefits that Do the... you have a, a point? I do. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm sorry. OK. The graph is old. It, it's 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 the the right kind of old. It's a good old. We have a furnace down there that uh, your grandfather you couldn't repair. We've been over this. Being old doesn't qualify a building for landmark status. I'm afraid unless you have something new to add, you're going to have to yield the floor. I am making a point. I'm I'm, I'm making. I have several points, and I'm just. I may be able I, to help I'm, with that. That shows that the Graf Hotel deserves to be a historic landmark. Uh, do you mind if I... Oh, please, yes. yes. It's all mine. Mary Catherine Donnelly worked as a maid at the Graf Hotel from 1900 to 1903. We don't know much about her, except for a few letters that she left behind after she moved on. Fortunately, she also left interesting. In April 1903, Mary Catherine had her photograph taken next to President Theodore Roosevelt in front of the Graf Hotel. Teddy Roosevelt was in Forest Ridge? Mm -hmm. That spring, he was at Yellowstone National Park to lay the cornerstone of the Roosevelt Arches, which still stand at the north entrance today. Teddy loved this part of the West more than anything, so he decided to stay and do a little bit more exploring. What nobody was expecting 
was that it was going to be the coldest spring on record. A freak snowstorm rolled in, leaving three feet of snow and Teddy and his entire crew stranded just outside Forest Ridge. By the time that the party made it back into town, they spent three nights at the Graff Hotel until the roads were clear. And you have proof of all this? Uh, I do, actually. Right here, I have a diary entry from Roosevelt. He kept one most of his life. And in April 1903, he wrote, snowed in at a little scrappy town called Forest Ridge. Stayed at the Graff Hotel, best three nights of sleep in years. But it wasn't just the Graff that inspired him. It was Forest Ridge. It was Montana. It was this entire part of the country and its people and the culture that inspired him while he was snowed in. So shortly after he went back to Washington, him and all of the future presidents the power to preserve the beautiful country of ours so that future generations could enjoy everything that he had. By making the Graff Hotel a historic landmark, we are not only celebrating Roosevelt's legacy. We are celebrating the spirit that makes this city, this country, so special. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor. That was, well, if we didn't love our town before, we certainly do now. Uh, now I believe Joel Sheenan would like a chance to have his say. I love this town. I do. It's my home. You know, my family's been a big part of Forest Ridge for five generations. Five generations. It's crazy. <laughs> they were here. And I think my great great grandparents, Timothy. Mary Catherine Sheenan. They'd be proud to support whatever decision this council makes. The request for building permits has been tabled pending our official submission to the state of Montana for the Graff Hotel to be granted landmark status. <laughs> It's about time to head back. Thank you. I still got a business to run. Mm -hmm. Besides, it's gonna take a while to rework the plans for the graph. You think the state will go along with the town? Make the hotel an official landmark? It's pretty hard to argue with Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> what Taylor found about Mary Catherine, your great-great-grandmother, Kind of part of our history, too. Hmm. Harvest Ball's tonight. You don't think he could hold off leaving for one more day? Not that I can't. I just... <laughs> you know, I'm about the last person that anybody wants to see at the ball. Especially Taylor. Truth is, I'm... I made up my mind to go. It's about her. Kind of hoping you'd be there. Help get me through it. Okay. I'll stay, Dad. <laughs> but I won't drink this. You can't make me do 
<laughs> it's like dirt. Wow, look at you. Oh, thanks. Sitter's here. Okay, great. I am almost ready. Oh, hey, guess what? The library in Seattle called, and they want me back. Get out. <laughs> That's great. I know, right? They want me to start next week. Wow, that fast, huh? I just, after everything you did for the town, I thought you'd want to hang around. Yeah, I mean, you were so right about Forest Ridge. This place is really special, and I love it, but I, uh, I can't. I gotta get back. Fair enough. And let's make this harvest ball one we'll never forget. <sighs> yeah. Perfect. Look at that. There you go. It completes the luck. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I owe you an apology. Ray. Joel told me you heard what I said to our investors. I'm sorry. I just got so caught up with the pitch, I didn't realize I was coming between you and Joel. I mean, it wasn't your fault. Joel could have said something. Uh, trust me, he did. <laughs> the moment those guys were gone, he told me taking you to the ball had nothing to do with business. Really? I mean, I didn't, I had no idea. Well, now that everything's settled, I gotta get back, but uh, I didn't want to leave without telling you. Thanks. Wait, where is Joel? Last time I spoke with him, he said he was heading to California. Thank you. <laughs> Joel, hey, it's Taylor. Look, I just spoke with Ray, and he told me what you said, and that you really wanted to go to the ball with me. And that that part of you that I really wanted to believe in was real. Just like you said that you were, I've been looking too. And I know that I have found it here with you. Anyways, I'm still at the graph and I'll wait for you. Just please, please don't leave. Okay, bye. You were right, business or not. I should have spoken up. You didn't leave. Gosh, look at you. Look at you. I couldn't leave without saying, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Show me my great great grandmother's face for the first time. You know, I I recognized her name from her marriage certificate. But we never had a photo of her. Till now. Well, if I knew who she was, I obviously would have told you. Seeing them like that, just well, I guess it made me wonder what it was like for them. They were starting out together, their whole lives ahead of them. Everything brand new, including this hotel. I guess some things just seem right. Well, maybe it is.